All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, just wanted to show you guys this Arctic Cat I've been working on here, and this is a buddy of mine. It's, it's a 99 Arctic Cat 300 4x4 ATV, and it had some problems. Um, the main one was that it didn't start. So uh, he had people looking at it for about two and a half years, couldn't really figure it out. They repa they replaced the uh, the CDI box. They replaced the ignition coil and still weren't getting any luck on it so um, I did a little digging um, asked a few questions found out that the stator itself was replaced and so nobody bothered to even you know think about that and, and check into it that he had look into it you know and he's, he's got other stuff going on he don't have the time to be looking at this stuff so that's why he gave it to me to look at and what I did is I went through all the electrical and found that all the the switches were good, but I found no continuity between the left handlebar switch and the ignition. All the fuses were good. Or no, the left ignition switch, or the left handlebar switch and the wiring harness that goes to the CDI box. So got all that sorted out, checked the CDI box. It seemed good, uh, seemed a little off, but then um, what I did is I wanted to test the stator. And so, what I ended up doing was I took the, the, the little two-wire plug that goes to the trigger coil on the stator and then I turned the key on and I, I did research and figured out that it's like a four and a half volts, I believe, that the trigger coil produces. When the flywheel magnet on the outside of the flywheel passes by the trigger coil, that four and a half voltage signal is what releases the stored up energy in voltage inside the CDI box. So I took a little battery, turned the key on, took a little battery and jumped it across those two little leads that are going into the CDI box itself and the spark plug was sparking on and off. So I ended up replacing the stator on it. And um, I got uh, replaced the seals on the outer cover there because one was just beat up and the other one was just, it wasn't looking good. One had a couple chunks out of it. And so um, it wasn't really leaking, but I didn't want it to leak when I put it back together. So I got that. I got a gasket kit for like, I don't know, I think 55, 60 bucks or something instead of just buying, you know, the single ones. It's Vertex, you know, it's the common stuff. So I ended up putting that on there and uh <clears throat> cleaned it all up put it all back together and started up ran perfect i ran about a half a tank of fuel through it um just testing it and you know making sure everything was good to go on it and uh the next day i went to go or no two days later i went to go start it up and um it started up and i'll, sh I'll show you what it does hold on a second all right so turn the key on you got your uh, emergency stop, put that to run, and it'll start up and idle, and it'll even rev for a second, but then stop. And it'll putt, 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 and it won't, it seems like it's running out of fuel. So it idles fine, but then if you give it throttle, it just starts starts putting 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 so I went through and I, I took the carb off I cleaned the carb cleaned all the jets pulled out all the passages and um, put that all back together and when I initially put it back together or, or when I got it uh, to the point to where I knew it was gonna run I flushed the fuel tank, I drained out all the fuel and it was like it looked like somebody peed in a bucket that had like kidney failure it was bad and so I cleaned out all the fuel. I, f I even flushed it with new fuel. And then closed it off, filled the fuel tank up, put it all back together. And it was still doing it. I don't know what the heck was going on. So I took the air cleaner off. You know, I just started going through the, the keep it simple, stupid steps. And so I took the air cleaner out. That was pretty dirty. So I cleaned that off, put it back together. I was thinking, okay, well, maybe it's just running rich. I changed the spark plug because the spark plug looked like it was fouling out because it just looked like it was running real rich. So long story short... Uh, it kept doing it. Well, I read online that um, the rev limiter 
will um, go haywire inside. I guess the rev, the rev limiter is inside the CDI box, and so if there's something wrong with the voltage regulator, if it's getting too much voltage, it'll make it go haywire. So I'll show you what I did. Okay, so under here you have your voltage regulator and rectifier, and the stator is like a magneto it's it's pretty much just a generator it tur it's got ac which is alternate current so it's got three coils and what the rectifier does is it turns those three sine wave signals into a direct current signal 12 volts and then it comes out here and obviously the black and white is just a ground wire goes to the ground and then the red it goes into the battery charges the battery and then it goes up to the the uh, the ignition switch, and then you know gets put into all the components, including the CDI box. So I checked the voltage while it was running, and just at idle, it started off at 14 when I started it up, and then it climbed. It would climb if I let it idle. It would climb real kind of slow up to like 17.8 volts, and that just didn't seem right to me. So. Like I said, I did some digging, and what I found out was that if the voltage regulator is allowing too much voltage, then it will throw a signal to the CDI box, and it will cause the rev limiter to uh, be activated to the point to where it won't let you rev it up. And so, now, what I did just now to test it is I unplugged the voltage regulator, and, you know, of course, it's not going to charge the battery um but either way the battery is connected to the ignition and so that's really all this does is this could this links the stator's charging capabilities it turns the 220 watts and rectifies it from alternate current into dc current which is direct current and then it charges the the battery that's really all that it does but being that it's throwing an over voltage the cdi box is detecting that and that's what's going on so i said what the heck you know i don't have another one i'm just going to go ahead and plug it in or unplug it and see what happens so i started it a minute ago a minute ago with it plugged in well this is with it unplugged so we'll let it idle for a second and then we'll rev it up No problems. So, as you can see, that seems to be the problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and order a voltage regulator, <laughs> rectifier, and uh, get this thing back together and running good. Uh, me and Calvin just got back from a ride. And this is really weird. And I'm gonna kind of go through like some knowledge that I know real quick. Um, so obviously on the inside of a voltage regulator, rectifier, you have something that will take, like I said before, it'll take the three uh, alternating current signals and rectify them into one using diodes I believe and so um, then the, the the regulator will take it from however many volts it is a uh, however many volts it's producing uh, down to like 12 volts or in this case probably like I think it's 12 to 14 volts or something like that okay so when they get old, connections break. Um, it can allow too much voltage, whatever. So Calvin and I took it for a ride, and I left the I left the voltage regulator plugged in. And um, when I did that, I got maybe I don't know 30, 40 yards, and it started putting again because it seemed like it was acting fine when I first started it up. So it started putting again or putting again. So I was like, all right, that's it, you know. So I ended up unplugging it, shut it off, unplug it, and then we went off and rode for 10, 15, uh, we went off and rode for like 10 or 15 minutes, 
And at that point, um, I was like, well, it's not acting like it's, you know, killing the battery yet. Like the battery would get too low if it's not being recharged, you know. So I ended up uh, getting off and I plugged it back in and I thought to myself, well, I'll just plug it in and let it charge until it's, you know, going to start put, put, putting again. And then I'll unplug it and we'll just keep going off and on like that. Well, I plugged it back in and the, it, what I noticed was I tapped the uh, regulator real quick so it's got heat fins all over it so I tapped it and it was super hot and I was like alright that makes sense because it's not putting out any voltage anywhere to you know it's, it's so all that energy that's coming from the stator is getting put off in heat instead of actually being used to charge the battery and then only a little bit of heat being put off so I plugged it back in and we went for another like 15-20 minutes at least and it never put putted again I brought it back home and uh, shut it off, started back up, and it was charging at like 14, 14 and a half volts right around there. And it was acting totally fine. So I'm not sure if by plugging it, unplugging it under here and leaving the stator still plugged into it, that it just heated it up so much that it like remelted the solder wherever it was breaking or something. You know, because I know that certain electronics, like Xbox for instance, there, there was a couple models where they had, I think it was the 360, that over time, because they used crappy solder, that it, it would break connection and you would have to, like with the CPU, so you'd have to heat the whole thing up, like wrap a towel around it, and then just turn it on and let it sit into where it didn't cool off, and it would remelt the solder and make a good connection again, and you'd be good to go. Well, or at least until it did it again. Well... I'm almost wondering if that's what happened to this because it's completely fine. It's not hot or anything. It's warm, but everything's acting totally fine. So I don't know what's going on. The battery's not super hot or anything. It's got the right charge to it. So yeah, I just found that really interesting. So I just wanted to let you go, let you guys know about that as well. Uh, it's another little bit of you know information that I'm sure people would find useful. So. Yeah, I'm definitely still gonna get a new uh, voltage regular voltage regulator rectifier for it, like a used one. You know, brand new. They're like two hundred ninety dollars from Arctic Cat or Country Cat or whatever. I'm not gonna charge him that. I'm not gonna have him charge, you know, pay that much for something that he can just get used and it'll last, you know, fifteen more years. So, but uh, yeah. So I just figured I'd I'd share that little bit of information from or with you guys. Um, as you guys can see, I got an Arcticat Trail Riders hat on. I got that from Mike Miller on the Facebook group, Arcticat Trail Riders. So thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. He also gave me a t-shirt. Super high quality. If you guys want a nice Arcticat hat, this is the way to go. And I got it on because it's like less than 60 degrees today. So, and it's May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. Happy, happy Cinco de Mayo, people. So, <laughs> Alright guys, I just figured I would uh, inform you about what happened with this. And if you guys are having the same type of problem, um, you know, hopefully that's probably your issue. I'll definitely look at the, the regulator rectifier and uh, go from there. Test it, and if it's, you know, putting out too much voltage or too little, definitely needs to be replaced either way. And then, uh, you know, unplug it and see if your problem goes away. And if it does, then heck, I'm going to have to say it's a voltage regulator rectifier. So. Alright guys, if you guys aren't subscribed and you like this type of content, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. And, uh, you know, if you guys uh, want to share the video and help out with, uh, you know, the channel growth, I'd appreciate that too. If you guys have any questions, chime in, ask away. We'll see you guys in the next video. So come on back, take care, and God bless.